I am recording. I've been recording since the day I burst out of the womb and I said, hey mama, why don't you give me a smooth shake and some fries with that ass? Welcome I, to Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to be like, oh, and I asked her for, I don't know, a Rode Procaster. I thought you were going to put in any microphone. Hey mom, let's get this on the tape. Wait, hold, I was going to put, I don't, I don't think I understand, but I want to support the bit. You said I have been recording since I oh, came I'm out of my mother's <laughs> womb. James, I'm not going to lie. I did not remember how that sentence started. <laughs> uh, hey, I've been there as well. Sean, oh my gosh. you called me Jameson before we started I recording. I did call you Jameson before because you're so frequently calling me Seanathan. Guess what my name was going to be if my mother had her way. Margie shouts out. Shouts out to Margie. I'm going to say Jim Beam. Oh, no. That'd be so much better than what she was going to call me. Uh, Svetka. No. Zima. It's a traditional Irish name that I think only two famous people of my knowledge have. One is a rock star and one was in Two and a Half Men. Kid Rock. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the uh, Irish pronunciation, Kid Rock. Nope, nope, it was going to be Angus. Angus? Yeah, would you have hung out with me if my name was Angus? Pete says, hey man, we're going over to Nicole and Angus's. I, prob I would probably be more likely to hang out with an Angus. Okay. No offense, but I'm glad I got to hang. You know, we don't fuck that shit. I hang out with you regardless of your name. If a rose by any other name, you'd still, you'd still try and fuck it. Shakespeare. A rose by any James. I like what you did there. James, host of this podcast, in addition to Sean, host of this podcast, this podcast being <gasps> motherfucking sweaty time pro wrestling. Welcome in where me and James go through uh, Lucha Underground. We're currently in season one. James, a, a, a bit of a nubile wrestling head. Me, a, a bitter old coot who stayed up way too late last night getting into wrestling arguments on Twitter. For as long as we still have Twitter. Yeah, you're being nostalgic. But hey, yeah. soon you'll be doing that on Mastodon. I hope. or Because like, I feel like if I'm going to get on wrestling arguments on Discord, it's too personal. Oh, yeah. You don't want that. No, I don't want that. They can find me. I have my mm -hmm. home address on Discord. Whoa. It wasn't a good idea. I can't get rid of it. Today, Nicole did say, where does Sean live? And I said, truly have no clue. And you never will. I live in the shadows and in the minds of the millions. But yesterday, this was a conversation today Nicole and I had, but yesterday you, you came up in conversation I with hate, us. I said it last week and I'll say it every week. It does. It scares me to no end to hear I came up in conversation. Okay. For I've seen your mind and the dark, twisted, haunted house of which it is. This is flattering, I think. Okay. You say that a lot. You, as I've mentioned before, as other people have mentioned, I know, uh, have the appearance of Kyle Mooney. Who is not a bad look, not bad looking gentleman. Very handsome. One of his shows is Smash, the Saturday morning action something Saturday block. You know that show on Netflix. A show I have seen commercials for and have not sat down to watch. It's very good. You should check it out. But one of the mm -hmm. characters he plays is like this, like, zuzzy za, like this 90s dude. Okay. Which now I like that you said zuzzy za, like those are real words that I would understand what you meant by. Okay. Well, zuzzy za, if you watch the show, he says that's his catchphrase. Damn it. So. I didn't know. I'm sorry. To all our Zuzzy Za fans out there, I'm so sorry. I am now watching an insane amount of Step by Step. <laughs> I That was a go-to, just so real quick. That was a very go-to show for us uh, growing up. Watching this, same for me, the Zuzzy Za character is clearly in motions, is just ripped from the codester, the code man, Cody Lambert. Great character. As far as Zuzzy, I think we can, I think, we're, you know what? Now that I understand Zuzzy Za, I think we can just, we can prescribe Zuzzy Za to a character archetype, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like Kramer is the Zuzzy Za of Seinfeld. Yeah. I think uh, arguably one of the better Zuzzy Zas, at least in recent memory, it was still like 15 years ago, uh, Spencer from iCarly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no. Great Zuzzy Za. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I, I wouldn't say kramer is kramer's more stressed out like zuzzy za is someone who goes with the flow 
I don't wouldn't say he's it's we Kramer is an odd character and we'll talk about wrestling someday mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I wouldn't call him stressed out. I would call him erratic, erratic, but oddly there is a calmness to him. He doesn't t- like right, like not a lot of things really affect Kramer. He kind of just does whatever he wants. Yeah. And usually gets away with it as long as it's not in the laugh factory. Uh, he's he's oh, still a little stressed oh, out, uh, but Sean. I, okay. Respectfully disagree. You're also Zuzzy Zah. Because of the Kyle Mooney, it goes you, Kyle Mooney, Cody, and loops back around. So I'm like, my friend's up on stage, man. That sound stage is being rocked by my good friend, Sean Marciniak. You look nothing like Cody. You act nothing mm-hmm. like him. But because of no. that little step by step, day by day, uh, Sean. Let's start over a different kind of way. I watched, I think, 14 or 15 episodes yesterday because Nicole said, we, when we get high on every Friday, we watch a few movies. But Nicole said, I was like, what do you want to watch? And she goes, to be honest, today, all I want to do is sit on the couch playing the Switch while you watch Step by Step. <laughs> and I had a religious experience while oh watching God. this show. It's so fucking good. It is well written when it is well written. And then other okay. times it's basic sitcoms. But there, it is dripping with horniness, Sean. Yeah, there's like a lot of like Cody, the d- the cousin who lives in a van in the driveway if you have not seen the show and are wondering what this whole, what this character is about, he is, I believe, 18. I think he's an adult. He's 20. He's 20. Tw- oh, that's not good either. Oh, no. Because I remember, the other thing I remember about Cody is that his major, not just his love interest, his predominant character want. Yeah. The thing this character wants out of this world more than anything else is to pork his new cousin. Yeah. Who is underage. They all go to high school. Which I have seen contemporary reviews of people saying it's creepy because he's their cousin. And it's like, no, he's older than her. But he's creepy. It's creepy on multiple levels. The fact that he lives in a van in their driveway and is so close, live way too close. There are so many terrible. He has he this man is covered in flags like he was a downhill ski slope. James, I need you but i'll say this it's not nefarious she's also dating college like it he might be the youngest person trying to pursue her oh god yes it is very complicated but (laughs) oh no cody (laughs) did you know this as revealed in like season two episode 13 Cody just says like, yeah, man, I'm a virgin. I'm pure. I like I fucking forgot. lost yes. it. Yo, I am Cody. That's true. And oh, because you're a virgin and you're pure. Hell yeah, baby. Pure. Yo, purity rings till the day I die. I'm the fifth Jonas brother. You may be a virgin, but you are far from pure, sir. What? How dare you? I'll slit your throat and dick it down. Okay, exactly. That's why you're not pure. What? Huh? But we were watching this episode And I'm stoned. I'm having a religious experience, truly like seeing hallucinating things, closing my eyes, listening to the theme song. But there's an episode that he starts out with Frank saying, hey, you know that conference we went to? And uh, Carol's like, yeah, how could I forget that boring piece of shit? And he says, well, good thing we went there because we won the raffle all expense paid trip to Hawaii. And they're like, yeah. And I turn to Nicole very stone and I go, Nicole, I hope it's a shot on location episode. And then <laughs> they f- it shows an airplane lifting up and then them in Hawaii. I'm like, Nicole, let's it's fucking shot go. On location. And she's like, why does that matter? And I go, the film stock is better. And then I, I point at the screen. I'm like, CC. And she's like, oh, yes, you are actually being honest right now. Ah, oh, that's true. I remember the big on location shots was uh, Full House for uh, the Disney episodes mm-hmm. when they were at Disneyland or World, whichever one it was. Those were like, because I don't remember the Hawaii step by step. I remember a lot of step by Like, I even remember uh, Cody being a virgin and then like that being my first take on like, oh, ABC sitcoms do kind of hit different. Mm-hmm. Like at, at some point, someone's going to be talking, Boy Meets World kind of did the same thing where like at some point... 
they're going to tell you, hey, we're virgins, and that's pretty cool. Well, I think this was a mandate by the studio, by ABC, probably because yeah. they're like, all right, out of this family of nine people, including Cody, you have two characters who aren't constantly trying to fuck, and that is the youngest daughter and the youngest son. But the second youngest son who's a nerd ass, is also so fucking horny. They're constantly trying to fuck every single character. So, yeah, make Cody a virgin. I like to think that part, the horniness, was a mandate from Patrick Duffy and Suzanne Somers, mm -hmm. who are very hot. Nicole asked, she goes, why are the parents so hot? And I go, do you mean like no. horny? And she says, no, like why are both of them so attractive? And I go, Nicole, Nicole, I, I was probably also stoned. I go, Nicole, Nicole, I actually know the reason for this. She's like, how do you know this? Why is this a question you can answer? And it's because- Wait, yeah, why is there a reason? The creators who worked on Dallas, no, Dynasty, they okay. wanted to create this family show- with a split family, but they were like, who who are like the hottest in both marketability and attractiveness? Like who's hot on the scene and who's hot in the genes Hell that yeah. we can get? So the parents have something to watch. Well, the children also have something when the children are just on screen. So they found the two hottest people, Patrick Duffy, Suzanne Summers. Hell yeah. It's literally, if you've never seen Step by Step, it's literally horny Brady Bunch. Uh-huh. I think that's the best description for a step by step is a horny Brady Bunch. Uh, and there's wintertime episodes and it's so cozy, Sean. I truly had one of the greatest days I've had this year. Fucking hey, man. Shouts out to step by step, Patrick oh. Duffy. You can still, Patrick, get it. Oh. Uh that I got it. You know when you start a sentence, you think it's gonna end in a pun, and then you just have to plow forward to what you did this week, uh, which is I did this week. Which is, I rewatched uh, All In 2018, or at least I started it. Uh, that is the uh, sort of before AEW was a thing. This was the proof of proof of concept, mm. right? There's mm -hmm. like, hey, we're just going to do a big old pay-per-view and show that uh, a, a company that's not WWE can sell out an arena. And the first match is our boy, our friend, Matt Cross, a.k.a. Backyard Wrestling Zone M-Dog 20, a.k.a. AKA. The son of the havoc. And I was just very excited because you know how like, you know, we, we've seen a lot of, I feel like a lot of people have this move in Lucha Underground where it's like a handspring and then they kind of like flip over the ropes to the outside. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm calling it a bunch of different things and I'm just adding words. If you're, if you sweet listeners at home may not have noticed, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yes, he does. I thought I did until uh, Matt Cross, who's in this match, uh, hits that move and Ian Riccoboni, uh, the voice of Ring of Honor, as well as Excalibur, the voice of P Pro Wrestling Gorilla, like simultaneously, like an old married coupled, just kind of look at each other and go, Sasuke special, in reference to the great Sasuke. It was very cute, and it made me very happy because it means when I see that move from now on, I only need to use two words instead of more. And a lot of... Going, and, um, that's all, folks. I Damn. am the Porky Pig of wrestling podcasts. Let it be known. Wait, you're, whoa, you're in with Marin's cats because you said podcasts. I sure did. <laughs> James, <laughs> tell Boomer. me about who are you? Boomer lives. James, who are your guys? And by guys, I'm sorry, you had one more bit before I transition. I do. Do you okay. want the good news <laughs> or the bad news? Oh. God, both at the same time. I can't. I believe in you. Try. <laughs> okay, well, Sean, we yeah. reached 1,000 total plays for this podcast feed. Let's fucking go, you dumb bitches. You know you love us. Mm -hmm. Even if, oh, yes, the least listened to podcast on the Marsh Land Media Empire no longer. Well, no, I'm glad you brought that up. Wait, why? So I used to do a show with Corwin called This Movie's Gay. We haven't put out an episode since July 21st, 2021. I believe that's when it was. And you never will again. Well, I hope we do someday, but Sean. Oh, me too. That me show too. that hasn't put out a new episode still gets more plays than this weekly podcast. 
Let's fucking go! The least listened to podcast of the Marshland Media Empire. You see this crown, little Corey? Hey, Nicole, you observe the title I wear upon my head? You will never touch this. I have claimed my stake in the disappointment of James. James, do you have a friend that disappoints you quite like me? Do I have a friend that disappoints? If that's how you're trying to segue into the unearth the underground, it's someone who doesn't disappoint me. No, I forgot about this segue. I just got real proud of myself because I had to to stop from crying. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I forgot what my segue was. But James, you know, what I do love listening to, other than this podcast, is some sweet, sweet music I may have never heard before. You got any Rex for us? Well, I sure do, because today on Unearth the Underground, Whoa. we are discussing an album, an EP, if you will, that came out 2014, I believe in April. And Sean, did you listen to today's subject? I didn't this week. I'm so sorry. Damn it. Okay, well, that sucks, because then I could have like gone off from you a little bit. But today, we oh, are discussing... to go. MC Deep's low res tape and happy birthday to him. He turned to 30 this year. Happy birthday, low res. So, this is my friend, my uh, most frequent collaborator when it came to music. I recorded all his stuff when I lived in Muskegon. I have mixed most of his stuff. There's a, a couple things that he did on himself, but from Deep Swish to MC Deep. But here's a quick story of our friendship. There was a Lord of the Rings class called The Modern Myth. That's how we met. It was just a, you read the Hobbit one marking period, whatever you call it, you know, quarter, and then... Semesters? Well, no, semesters are two uh, marking periods. There's there's a specific name for just the quarter of the school year. Did you go to, where did you go to school? Like the middle of the earth? No. How are they breaking up semester? We just call them semesters. Well, semesters were from like the beginning of the year to... I'm to Christmas time, and then from Christmas yeah. time to the end of the year, those are semesters. And that's it. What? I'm a marking period? Oh, I don't remember what it was called. Just consider it a quarter, okay? Okay. No, you're. Here's the thing. You're probably right. I'm more. I'm more astounded by my own lack of knowledge of this country's education system. Okay. Well. Just break those quarters up and you read one of Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series. And cool. there was this kid who was just kind of a spaz, didn't talk much or did talk a lot, but didn't seem to. He was a nerd. OK, he was it, most people in this class were seniors who were taking this as an easy English credit. I was a senior in this class just taking all of the English credit. So. I'm like enjoying it. This person I become friends with, not enough friends with to have taken a picture of him sleeping in the class. And then like two weeks later, I show him the picture and he's like, that that's an invasion of privacy, sir. I was like, <laughs> okay, fine. But flash forward, I left KYP and I'm like, hey guys, if you need a place to record, hit me up. I'm looking to just start recording people. And Tyler hits me up and says, hey, I'm doing this group called MC Deep. You know, we're, we're not that great. I heard your new songs, Heme Numb, Ace, and MCs act like they don't know. I, I, I'm really liking what you're doing. I'd love to come over and record. I'm like, yeah, send me what you have. And he's like, here it is. And I just was the driving force for all of Deep Swish and as like a, a producer in the classic sense. And then... He branched off to start doing solo stuff, and I, I don't remember. I think he just wanted to do a really 
dirty, lo-fi sounding project. And he's like, how could we do this? And at the time I was messing around with a distortion, a saturation plugin called Omicide. It, it's so fucking good. It made an acoustic guitar sound like an electric guitar, like with feedback and all that. It's so good. It's a free plugin at that, and it's a four-band saturation. So Ooh. check that out, guys. You'll enjoy Shouts it. Shouts out to Omicide. Oh, or like Omicide or Omicide. Omicide. Yo, O is the face I make when I think of those four bands, uh -huh. baby. Oh. So he wanted to do this project and wanted it to sound like really dirty, kind of like ill communication esque vocals. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, one, let's use a performance microphone instead of the condenser. So then we're already playing off from like a natural distortion not something that's super clear. And then let's just try and fuzz it up as much as possible. And I think when it comes to just how, like the sound of a record, this is the best thing I've ever done, the low res tape. It's only hey. like six songs and all of them are awesome. It's Rip Off Mike, such a good one. Duality, fantastic. Then Cassette Dreams with Filmy, Unnamed and Loud. So... I was hoping you would listen to this to, because you'd be like, wow, you guys in Muskegon really depressed <laughs> because that's what it I, is. OK, yeah, I think I know that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I, I get as much as I'm sorry. I So uh, spoilers, be better than me and listen to this week's Unearth the Underground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm a trash bag. But yeah, you guys, you live in Muskegon. I can't imagine there's much joy in, in a town called Muskegon. You're like, the two people I know from there are super depressed. Maybe yeah. that's a trend. <laughs> and I was going to say, like, when it comes to Tyler's music, we're, we're kind of a yin and a yang. We're mm -hmm. both very depressed, but his music is about overcoming the depression. Well, mine is succumbing to the depression. Oh. So he's dealing with it in a healthy manner. Yeah. You have to eat more. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool, Formulaic, cool, cool. maybe. Also, hey. but, you know, sometimes he's talking about, like, drinking and stuff. I don't do that. He says, 20 no. years in my, or 20 years I've been living here. 20 beers in my belly. Cheers. PBR is what I'm drinking. Nicole and I would <laughs> just say those lines relentlessly to him. It, it's it's from a very good song off from the Vintage Mischief mixtape. I like it. And those are fun lines. He's like, why do you guys make fun of just... Make fun of a funny song that I've done, not the like super <laughs> serious ones. And then we go, PBR is what I'm drinking. And then he says, oh, you guys are just a loop of sound bits. I'm, I, I guess I'm going to leave this conversation. But I think all the songs are awesome on this. Uh, my recommendations, if just rip off mics and duality, start just the first two songs. If you like how it sounds, we did originally want to render this. Most music is rendered at four point or forty four point one kilohertz. We wanted to go down one or two grades below to maybe twenty four kilohertz or thirty two. But when we sent it to Phil me, the other person that's on this record, he was like, hey, guys, I understand what you're doing here. However, the general public won't. They'll just think this sounds shitty. How you guys have gruffed up the vocals as is is enough for you guys to to convey this message without deterring people. And I'm glad he said that because it would have it would have sounded real bad. I get that. Yeah, it would, I had an acting teacher that would always be like, it's better to go too far because it's easier to rein it back. Mm hmm. It's a lot easier to take, you know, uh, the, the old adage was to put a veil over it. And I think it's the same way with experimentation mm -hmm. or like go too far, get fucking wild with it, with the understanding that it's easier to rein it back in mm -hmm. when you go too far with it. But like, yeah, yeah you got You got to get fuck. You got to get buck cherry uh, before you can get uh, cherry cola. Yeah, I will have played one of these songs so the listeners know because this isn't someone I all of these are underground records, but this one in particular, people will be like, what the fuck is this? It's on Bandcamp. Go get it. Make Tyler happy. So random listeners will have done a better job researching this episode than I, one half of the hosts. Yeah. 
least listen to podcasts in the empire, baby. Mm-hmm. I will also say on this album, it's now been, it's been eight years. So I can finally listen to unnamed without the stress of having to mix it because after mixing that, I had to. T- I, I was like, Tyler, were you not listening when you were? D- were you just going in blindly, not listening to the main track while doing the overdubs? And he was like, No. What What are you talking about? And I was like, This is the most off you have ever been on all of your overdubs. It took so long. He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, Okay, fine. Just get out of here. Oh, and one mm-hmm. final. This is a story after okay. this was released okay. and put out. So. There was, we, we got a phone call. We were living together. It was Tyler, Brandon, and myself. Brandon owned the trailer we lived in. I was the last one to get there. And Tyler was the, the bridge to me and Brandon. And Brandon and I, and I became very good friends. But we hadn't seen Tyler in a while. And we got a call. And Brandon comes up to me and he's like, hey, you paid bills, right? And I'm like, yeah, I gave Tyler I put my rent money in a in a DVD case because we had Nicole and I had gone to Chicago for the first time ever. And that's when we were like, oh, we got to move to Chicago. So I was like, yeah, I sent him that money. And he's like, well, I got a phone call from the trailer park management saying it was never paid for. And they're they're talking about lawyers and all that bullshit. I was like, oh, well. I, as the responsible one who had any money in his savings account, I will go get a money order just to figure this out. Well, we try and find Tyler because he was not answering any of our calls and we were like calling everyone. He wasn't just nothing. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on to the point where we were like, let's just, maybe he's at his parents' house. Let's just go. We knock on the door. His mom answers and we're like, is Tyler here? And she said, yes, I'll go get him. He comes out like looking ashamed and very serious. And we're like, hey, man, you're responsible for the rent. What's up? And he's like, yeah, guys, I I need to talk to you. So like I during the weekend when James was out of town, I go, I get the money and I'm already like, why? Why didn't you just wait to get the money when you got the, the he had it in his wallet? So, uh I would say this is either the plot of Grandma's Boy or the last scenes from It's a Wonderful Life. And I'm not sure which way it's going to go. So he said, over the weekend, I was with one of my Checkers co-workers. He worked at Checkers at the time. Okay. And we went to, I believe it's called The Odyssey. Could be either still leading a little towards Grandma's Boy. The Odyssey is a strip club. Okay, we're going full Grandma's Boy. And he, he got shit face drunk, and when he woke up, all the money was gone. Oh, we're going we're going full grandma's boy by way of the uncle Uncle Billy from It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, where it's not like he purposely like he uncle he he uncle billied he uncle billied his way into a grandma's boy. That's terrifying. So not only did Tyler have to pay me, it was. A hundred and eleven dollars. That's split three ways. Our rent was three hundred and thirty three dollars, which is not bad. I assume it's I I mean, I mean, you can't compare it to like Chicago. Oh, well, I mean, our rent was three hundred and thirty three dollars split three ways. It was one hundred and eleven. Yeah, which is great. But he did not have that money. Which sucks. Like that. Like that's the thing. You could say it's great, but like if you don't have the money, you mm-hmm. don't have the money, and that does change location to location. And he was. We didn't see him for like four days because he was just trying to find anyone who would loan him this money. And this yeah. was a big rift in our relationship because he had kind. It felt like he stopped talking to us, and he was kind mm-hmm. of just going to like dip out because he also owed me money for mixing this album so on top of the 111 he owed me i was i think i was charging him because it was hey take that off from my side of the rent and you pay for that so maybe it was like 50 dollars for this entire album to mix that's about nine dollars per song but yeah luckily he paid back and he was very friendly about it he no longer lived there which sucked but Mm. Yeah, very fun album to listen to. And if you like this, please check out the album Black Suit. It's also on 
the Bandcamp, mcdeep.bandcamp.com. Black Suit is fucking fantastic. It was him, the Fed, or that Fed, which you like that name. I do like, listen, big fan of the Fed. We know it. Mm -hmm. We love it. Billionaires per day, billionaires. So that was their like opus and the last album that Tyler has put out officially. It's so good. Uh, it's just Black Suit. There's a song on it called, and this will be the last thing I talk about, called Ascend. It's like a minute and a half. And it's just, there's some auto tune and vocoder on it that I put on. And it sounds beautiful. Two thumbs up. Check it out. Let's get into Lucha Underground. Hell yeah, this is uh, season one, episode 11, Last Luchador Standing. Uh, before we start anything, uh, I guess initial thoughts on this episode. I had to watch this twice. Oh, because it was so heart pounding? Well, because there was one day where I was like, I have so much fucking work to do. <laughs> I was like, we're double dipping today. Yes, and that's why at the end of my work day... I was like, I won't have time to watch this episode on the day we're recording because we are doing two records, one of formulaic, one of this, where I was like, I need to watch this and take notes. And I just wasn't in the headspace to fully enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I, I got to give it a second try. Even on the second try, I think I know what was the issue. And that yeah. is the commentary between these two Vampiro and Stryker suck so fucking hard. This is their worst commentary out of ever any of these 11 episodes. I took a couple of notes on them. I don't know. Maybe I've been like just so jaded to bad wrestling commentary. I, th I think they're fun. I think it could be worse. But again, uh. I've seen I've listened to a lot of like just not good car commentary, you know, over the years. So like, ah, ah. Like at least, at least they're no, at least they're knowledgeable when they're knowledgeable, and they care when they care. This was all color, no commentary. Yeah, which is something I think they run into a lot. Mm -hmm. I think Stryker is good when he does. Wait, actually, but actually, I like that. I like color. Co uh, no, I like I like play by play. What am I talking about? Well, I mean, also this was a grayscale color commentary where it was just all color, but colorless. It was unenjoyable and bland <laughs> all right well let's get into it uh first thing i want to do and the reason i'm going to bring it up we won't i don't want to spend time on it something i enjoy about the recaps and what they've become they didn't start this way but especially this week it's not just recapping the big stories the obvious things you would have gotten by watching the show weekly mm -hmm. they're recapping things you would not have noticed which i think was also i guess it was part of this episode like they recap the crew, how much they suck and have not helped Big Rick. They highlight that. And then they highlight Penta, I'm not respected to Mexico, Gone Jr. And how he's making poor career choices by hanging out with Chavo. Two very much B storylines, but were absolutely happening in the background and are setting up for something. Or also necessary for the matches that will be happening. Absolutely. And like, that's what good, I think that's like a, a really nice ensemble piece you kind of want that. You want to cycle through, if, when you, you have an ensemble series, you want mm -hmm. to cycle who are the main characters in the episodes. You want to have Power Rangers in the mind, is on the mind for some reason. Uh, but you want to have a Zack heavy episode and then a Trina heavy episode. You know, you want to, you do want to cycle that pretty like healthily and, and mm -hmm. uh, a lot Ali so that it doesn't get tired. And, I, and that's, why, that's why I'm kind of like stoked about this. Also, I'm just a big old Pentagon Jr. fan. Yeah. Because I don't remember I don't remember that I'm not respected in Mexico promo. We probably talked about it. Uh, yeah. But my brain is mush. Yeah, there's zero uh, wrinkles on that, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero mayado, but also zero wrinkles. Smooth as a baby bottom. We cut to the desk. And Matt and Vamp are hyping up the last luchador standing match between Cuerno and Drago, where the hunt has just begun, and it will begin and end tonight. Woo! Last luchador standing, love a last man standing, stoked for that main event. But we got a whole bunch of wrestling to get to before that, don't we? And Stryker's voice has recovered, which, Sean... Mm -hmm. Yes. You're the wrestling fan. Why aren't you the one bringing this information to the show? Which is 
I looked up the recording schedule and thank God Reddit exists because there's a Lucha Underground Reddit who nice. these people say like, hey, tickets are coming out now for these dates. And then you can go to separate websites that confirm this. And it was they record two shows on Saturday, two shows on Sunday. Only the weekends were when they were filming. And mm-hmm. then in later seasons, the ones that had more than like 24 episodes, those sometimes they would film three episodes in the same time. Okay. Which is, thank you for looking that up because I just had speculations of they're recording more than one episode at a time. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, more than two episodes or two days per week. I thought it was like Monday through Friday. We're going to do two episodes every single day. I'm thinking like Double Dare. I knew Double Dare, I think, would Mm. film five episodes a day, Monday through Friday. Yeah, which would be. And I wonder if that part of it is just wrestling, Mm -hmm. where like if they would a five day a week schedule with two episodes is a lot. But that's also kind of the WWE schedule. They Mm -hmm. have like a very grueling schedule uh, also like with live shows, with house shows. But also you have to put in, I think the WWE schedule is worse because you have to put into yeah. consideration the traveling. I literally think the only schedule worse than WWE might be Saturday Night Live. And I'm not even sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you do have to factor in traveling. I think Matt McCarthy ha- wrote for both. So... I I don't know if he's commented on that, but he has commented on how the scheduling, even as a writer, fucking sucked. It was a dream job that became a nightmare. Yeah. And imagine like as that's a writer, imagine having to also like, hey, at some point I have to hit the gym, Mm -hmm. you know, at some point like, yeah, I have to like do all this stuff to make sure my pecs are pecking and my abs are shimmering like that's. So much work going into working for the WWE. It's insane. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Vince McMahon things. Yeah. A lot of of problems. Uh, But yeah, that explains a lot. That that explains a little bit of the, again, phenomenal match. I do implore people to seek it out. Uh, But some of that sluggishness in the beginning, in the first gear of uh, Phoenix and Puma, and how long... Okay, so we have a clear on Stryker's voice. He sounds like a people again, which is mm-hmm. great. How much longer do you think Mike Knox, the referee, is going to keep that cast on his hand? I feel like Mike Knox, great referee. He's he's refereeing, He's a PWG ref, as well as a bunch of other indies, especially in the uh, SoCal region of the states. Mm-hmm. He, dress, he referees for AEW nowadays. He has had a cast on, I think, his right hand since like the second episode. And I'm very concerned about this man's hand. And I'll say it, his masturbating practices. I'm worried for Mike Knox in 2014. Well, that would only be four weeks. Okay. Uh, Tops. I know, but it feels so much longer. And could you go four weeks without whacking it? I couldn't. I refuse. Uh, well, that's why you just rub your ding dong on things. Idiot. Uh, I am an idiot. That's true. You know what? That's true. You hump a pillow. Oh, uh, man. You know what pillow? I want to hump a body pillow featuring this opening tag match. Between Castro and Cisco, that's Mr. Mr. Cisco. Cisco. Miss, that's Mr. Cisco. With Bale versus Pimp- Pimpinella Escarlata and Mascarita Sangrata. Oh, hey, Bale. As they're op- they're announcing it, uh, and if you for- if you forgot, which I would not blame you, Cortez Castro, Mr. Cisco, that's Mr. Cisco, and Bale are the crew of Big Rick. These guys are the hired, the hired guns, the hired thugs. Uh, I believe Vampiro referred to their style as prison shower style. Oh, daddy. That's for true. <laughs> I like that Bale is just like, like even Bale's in the ring already with a kendo stick. Mm-hmm. He's just like, yeah, we're going to fight someone. But, and then, but we have Pimpinella and uh, Mascarita. What a match. Yeah. I was excited. I was pleasantly surprised by this match. Yeah, I enjoyed both wrestling styles of like, hey, they do such a great job at being the street fighters type style as mm-hmm. opposed to like this high flying wrestling. You, There's a distinct comparison. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. It was great. Everyone did well. Which I think is so much fun in shows like wrestling uh, is that it should feel like a variety show. It's kind of same thing with like Avengers or like 
the problem with certain like Joss Whedon moments in the Avengers movies is that everything feels like a Joss Whedon movie <sighs> where like I want like I, I do want Iron Man to sound different from Captain America, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and I, like I want these differing styles. I want Hulk to kind of be a sad bastard uh, because everybody hates him. You know, like I like I want the I want those textures and having the crew. I call them the crew. I don't know. I didn't catch if they had an actual name. I thought they did. I thought it was the crew. Is it just the crew? OK, maybe that's because you keep saying it. Maybe it's just it might be me. I might. I, I was writing for Lucha Underground in 2014. Whoa. I know it was crazy. I was let go for reasons of being not good at writing. But like <laughs> uh, meaning that like you you have no idea, much like most people don't know how to use chopsticks, you just cannot figure out a pen or pencil. For the life of me. I stare at it until I hope it moves like K-Pack, but then I realize I'm not K-Pack. But insanely, you're so fucking good with chopsticks. Mm, that's, it's, it's the curse of my life. But thankfully, I'm drowning in sweet and sour chicken, so I'm doing okay. You are very good with one of those circle dude ads. The sp- spiral s- spirograms? Uh, yeah, because it's, they're kind of like a chopstick. Yeah, okay. I don't think I actually know what you're talking about. They make circles. You put a pencil in it. It's for like design oh, work. Oh, protractors, right? Well, protractors no. can also do that. I'm thinking of it's like a one. T- it doesn't matter. One is a metal pointy thing. The yes. other is a pencil. You split it open uh, like crab legs that you're about to fuck. Okay, yeah. You know, when you have sex with crabs. And then you draw a circle. I think I thought those were that was a form of protractor. I could it be could wrong. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I was really excited to see Cortez Castro show off. No offense to Mr. Cisco. I think some of the reason Mr. Cisco's style looks so rough is because he is a little rough, maybe. Yeah. Since we're in the match, we did brush over when after he says that's Mr. Cisco, and then the crowd starts booing and he screams to them, "We don't like you either." <laughs> You know what, Mr. Cisco's the best. Yeah. You don't have to. You don't always have to be the cleanest wrestler in the world to yell at an audience, and to have that that's Mr. Cisco line put in there. I would love to see a character who is a foil to Pimpy, who is truly like someone Pimpy loves to just kiss wrestlers in the ring. I would mm-hmm. love and referees. Yes, I would love either a ref or another wrestler, probably another wrestler. Gets kissed and then says, no, no, no. And then like motions to off like backstage and then an HR character comes out and is like, (laughs) hey, you can't do this, Pimpy. Like unless this is cleared by the other wrestler. No. What are you doing? This is a lawsuit. Wrestling. You know what? Wrestling should have more HR. I agree. (laughs) (laughs) Characters or not. Yeah, uh, we get a line in there on the, speaking of commentary, Vampire, I believe, refers to the match as a gangbang. They're gangbanging Pimpy. Matt Stryker comes in with, can you not use the term gangbang when Pimpinella's in the ring? And I'm like, damn, even when Stryker doesn't want to be horny, he's horny. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what? I've come around. I feel bad for this poor, this poor, poor Matt Stryker. He's just always horny. I don't he can't think help he it. is. He needs help. He's probably a virgin. That's why he's so horny. He's Zuzzy Za. We need to get this, this Zuzzy Za Matt Stryker laid so he can calm the fuck down and call this Pimpinella match, uh, which is great. People are real excited for It's hard to not watch Pimpinella and like not be on board. They're so good. They understand who they are so well. They're so fun to watch. They are just the epitome of babyface. Like you like I, 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 I love Pimpinella. They're phenomenal. Uh, and they, and they do, and they do some real cool stuff as big, big Rick makes his way down to watch the match from the stairs with his big stinky cigar, which I would love because they're like, oh, he's, he's puffing smoke into the face of LA regulations because how are you smoking here? I would love this, Sean, a Mm -hmm. vape pen that looks like a lit cigar. So you can still have that motion doing the vape pen looking like you're chowing down on a big old stogie. (sighs) I think they do make those. Okay. But is anything that's like, yeah, that would... It is a small, this, again, this is not an arena. This is a small television studio mm-hmm. with fairly high ceilings, but probably about the size of a, of a medium to small warehouse, yeah. I would guess. Or at least that's what they're trying to make it look. It's probably even smaller. So fuck that cigar. 
it stinks to high heaven. I forgot how loud Pimpy's chops were. Pimpy, uh, the a wrestler I mentioned before, uh, Effie, got to wrestle Pimp, uh, Pimpinella Escalada at uh, the, uh, his recent uh, Effie's Big Gay Brunch event, GCW. This is probably about a year, less than a year ago. And I love it. And Effie's also wrestled someone called the Murder Grandpa, Minoru Suzuki, affectionately named the Murder Grandpa, legend in Japanese wrestling, one of the big guys behind sort of bridging the gap between mixed martial arts and pro wrestling from the Antonio Inoki nerd wrestling, nerd wrestling, nerd wrestling. Evie wrestled both of these competitors, Pimpinella and Minoru Suzuki. Again, Minoru Suzuki, the guy who fought people for real with his wrestling style and has gone on record to say Pimpinella strikes harder. Oh, damn. And you could hear it. Those chops are loud. When they reel back their hand and slap the titty of Castro, I feel it in my bones all the way from 2014. It's brutal. I love it. Uh, we have an interest, another interesting moment on commentary where Vamp and Stryker discussed the pronouns of Pimpinella years before they were equipped to do so. But also made me realize, and I, I looked around, I couldn't do it. Uh, I'm not sure on Pimpy's pronouns, actually. I thought it was he. They think it's he as well. But uh, I, from researching, it could be dependent on the wrestler themselves, but based on what what is this style of wrestling called? Exotico. Exotico, when I was looking that up, it seems like it is like they are men. Like they're, they're mm -hmm. not trying to play like, oh, we are actually women in the ring. It, that part made me feel like you would use he, him, but it could be based solely on the wrestler. Yeah, like I would, I'm very curious. I'll have to actually go. I didn't, I, infor, I should have had the time to like actually go through the backlog of Effie podcasts and find the episode where he talks about his match with Pimpy. Uh, because like there are, because there are, yeah, because I'm, I'm curious and I'm not totally sure that Vampiro and Matt Stryker cleared that with Pimpinella beforehand. Maybe they did. We should give them the benefit of the doubt. But you know, they are Matt Stryker and Vampiro. So yeah, it's what it is. I think one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life, uh, I believe it's Castro throws Pimpy into the corner, then charges Pimpy reverses the charge by climbing the second rope and sticking out their butt. Castro runs headfirst into Pimpy's butt and is laid down. This is the best wrestling match I've ever seen in my life. 10 out of 10 stars. Unfortunately, even with a smooch Pimpy lands, uh, it's not enough to get the win. Crew picks it up. Big rig on Masquerita for the W at 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Now there's a little post-match. Hell yeah, brother. The little post-match is Big Rick. Sitting on the stairs, smoking a cigar. Oh, and before I forget, there is a shot of the mysterious leather woman. Which, very odd because, like, she's there officially right now because she has, like, a, a lanyard with a all-access pass and all of that. And, like, a crew t-shirt. Like, she's not in leather at all. I think she's wearing jeans. Mm -hmm. I feel <laughs> like she is... What is going to happen, this is my prediction right now based on f what we've seen. She is an agent or a talent scout from another federation, another the fed. W-W something. I couldn't think of the last letter. Uh, WWP Pro or res World Wrestling Pro Time. P. Okay. Or World Wrestling Professionally. P. I... Okay, or yeah. just or PP. Hey, Could you pee -pee. You, you doing piss miss this year? You know it, baby. I think Hell so. Yeah. I gotta double check those dates. But I yeah, can't. Yeah. Okay, I wanted to do this song last year, but Nicole, let me. Uh, well, first, what was I talking about? I think the first thing you said that she, uh, the mysterious woman in yes. leather, agent. when she's not wearing t-shirt and jeans, you think you think it, it's an agent? Yeah, and either for a real wrestling promotion or a fake one of like hey i'm trying i'm gonna bring these people over i think she's going to be something along those lines that's my guess can i give you my guess what's up i'm gonna say she's connected to the key some way i think she's an agent but not for another company for she's like a three-letter agent you know she's like she's undercover hunting down Quato, who is doing something very magic and very illegal oh okay i think i, I that's what i'm thinking maybe that Maybe she's maybe she's trying to figure out what's going on with the key. What the hell is Mil Muertes up to? Mm -hmm. What's that rock they keep licking? What's happening here? Johnny Mundo's abs? How? Just how? 
I feel like that's that's where I'm leaning towards. I'm not sure though. That's my hypothesis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Real quick, it looks at least on a wrestling forum, someone said like, "Hey, I you I recommend using proper pronouns for Pimpy," and they said he is okay. an exotico a luchador. Mad Striker Vampiro, I owe you a big old stinking apology. I'm so sorry. But again, I don't this, know where I heard that. Yeah, these are people um, from 2014, so I don't know. But and specifically, wrestling fans and personalities in 2014. Yeah, <laughs> like again, yeah, ten years behind on everything. Every year for Pissmas, we do a Pissmas Carol, which is just a parody of a Christmas song. Mm -hmm. Last year, I presented. The f just these first two lines to Nicole, and I was like, hey, I think this is where we should go for this one. And then she said no. And it's frothy yellow man made from squally urine holes. And she said no, not absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, no, 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 I heard the first part when you said it. And the, I was like, then you want to know yeah, what? How okay. about you write something better? And she didn't. So this year I did the entire one. This is the full song. Can I do okay. it? Do you think we have time? Yeah, of course. Frothy okay. <laughs> yellow man made from squally urine holes with a steamy stripe when the runoff froze and a spell spoke from a scroll. Frothy <laughs> yellow man can't be buried beneath clay. Peepee -pee coats his throat as he bellows in boats of his magic yellow spray. Us pissmas folks were ecstatic the day Frothy came to town. For when we saw his drippy head, the king of pissmas had been crowned. Then it goes, <laughs> Frothy. Then it starts fading yeah. out. Nice. You know what my favorite part of that is? What's up? I think you knew I was trying to ice you out, and I paid for it. <laughs> like I was like I was trying to do the real long pause and then go back into the episode as a burn to my friend for a bit like it's actually I like that it's that's it's quality lyrics there uh, -huh. uh but I just wanted to ice you out for I don't know humor purposes and instead I just got the whole song so it goes to show you if you're being an asshole to your friends be careful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get what you deserve uh rock with modern lifestyle post match. I, I will Rick? just yeah. real quick. There was another Please. one that Nicole's like, absolutely not. And we it's it, it's okay. like a song about someone not understanding the Pissmas tradition, which was last Pissmas, I gave you a shart. And it was about like someone just <laughs> Who shitting. Pissmas is about sharding. Yeah. yeah. It's a different, it's a different thing. That's actually. <laughs> but it strings together I to want someone knowing the Pissmas tradition. I kind of want a romantic comedy where like maybe the first, I like guess the first scene, it's not the whole movie, but it's a very lonely guy he's trying to figure out, trying to get back into the dating world or a very lonely person. They're trying to get back into the dating world and you just see, maybe we don't show it a lot, but they're, le they're getting kicked out of like a water sports swingers event because they sharded themselves and they don't quite understand like, well, I thought this is what we're doing. It's like, no, we we're peeing on each other. You did something different get out of here yeah i was pissing out my ass that's poop and you know it oh. get out of here if it's brown you can't come around oh uh post match because there's no transition for this uh big rick enters the ring with a cigar in his hand and thoughts on his mind he is here to let everyone know and he means every one of you pointing to the crew that he is here for gold, and that we all must answer the judgment of Big Rick. And then, chop, chop block to the back of the knee of Big Rick by the crew, they've turned on him. He got swerved, bro. Mm -hmm. I was legitimately shocked. Same. I did not think, yeah, I kind of thought this would be like a long-term thing. I thought Big Rick was kind of the glue behind the crew. As it turns out, now fuck this guy. Kendo shots and the fin I love this spot. They hold Big Rick down, uh, Bale and Castro, while Cisco takes the cigar that Big Rick kind of handed him when he started his monologue mm -hmm. and shoves the burning cigar into his eye. Fucking brutality. 
gives him a stamp. The stamp you should want is a Darling Homebody stamp, which you'll receive on all your uh, Darling Homebody Society orders. Head over to DarlingHomebody.com right now to for more details. Absolutely. Just like the crew headed over into Cueto's office after the match. And we cut to Cueto's office after a commercial break, but we don't have commercial breaks because we're watching on the internet in 2022, baby. And Dario is paying out the crew in the office, musing on how Big Rick's inability to see how valuable we could be to one another. Cueto punches home that if you have my back, I'll dig deeper. And they kind of nod and he pauses. And I love this. He goes, can I get a yes, sir? And they all give him the yes, sir. And I'm, oh, I'm feeling it. I'm, fe- I'm not, honestly, I wasn't feeling Big Rick and the crew as much as I'm feeling Cueto and the crew. Yeah. I think this makes sense. Like, I think Big Rick is, it just, it may, uh, it's, it's just so much more sinister. And to be fair, Cueto, Big Rick's great. I like, I like Big Rick a lot, but it's hard to be more sinister than this guy, Dar- uh, Dario Cueto, who's crushing it. Cannot overstate enough how good of a, like a bad guy authority figure and like how like weaselly and sniveling, but powerful and yeah. awe inspiring at the same time. Love it. Now, I would much rather Big Rick team up with Puma and Mundo. I'm hoping. Later on to just take down the crew. I love that. I would love to see that character arc of like, of having to, of having to apologize. Like, man, I've been a douchebag, but I'm kind of up shit's creek right now without a Chris Elliott. It'd be like a Vegeta situation. I would love a Vegeta situation with Big Rick. I'm hoping. Is he the, I'm hoping. I forget. I remember I looked it up before when he retired. I know it's like right after his time with Lucha Underground. I don't know if he makes it past season one, so we'll see. Oh, no. I know. That's okay. But yeah, the crew is officially with, signed to Cueto exclusively. And Vamp Hero, I said that weird. Vampire Hero has an exclusive interview <gasps> with Cage. That's the guy who's not, he's not even a man. He's not a machine. Yeah. He said, hey, Vampiro goes, I'm here with the man they call Cage. I'm like, he is not a man called he's Cage. He's not a man. He is the slowly moving machine that is called <laughs> Cage. Wait, slowly moving. I'll give, of all the reasons we can shit on, Brian, on Cage, which we will have. I th- he he moves wonderfully. No, remember the cage moves slowly that you put oh, that dog in. <laughs> I forgot. Oh wow, I'm so glad. Well, you know what? If that's the cage, it has to be actually a very quick moving cage. Oh shit! Oh, it moves, he moves real fast, quick. and that moves scares real fast. the dogs yeah. even more. Dude, you're so good at tormenting canines. Anyway, this guy's not at Helico, so I tuned out. That's not fair. I, I hear tuned back in. Cops buy a lot of these cages. I'll be very honest. Vamp lets Cage know that he's <laughs> arrogant. No, hold, do hold it. I'm just going to keep. Yeah, they, they are trying to get me to build. It's It just takes so much more ingenuity. A horse sized cage so they can put their horses in there. Sure. I think that's the plot to the four musketeers. Uh huh. Vampiro lets Cage know that he's arrogant and that everyone backstage hates you. What's up with that? Which is the greatest first question to an interview ever. Hey, James, I think you're arrogant. I think you're a piece of shit. Everyone thinks you're a piece of shit. I fucking hate you. I'm going to chop. I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to stop shitting in Chavo's bag just so I can start shitting in your throat. I hate you so much. So does everyone else. What's up with that? Man. How do you respond? I, I will respond like this. Wow, man, this, you're validating the voices inside my head. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been, and Cage is like, I've, and again, like going back to Cage, Cage is like, a big guy that moves really well was in the WWE system for a minute and just kind of like fell through the cracks. I'm sure there is a little bit of insecurity in this man. But it doesn't come off. I mean, it doesn't. I, He's wonderful. I love him so much in this because he could be extremely pompous of like, I'm the best fuckers, which he kind of is, but in a factual way. Of saying yeah. like, yes, here, here's my record. Here is how I act. Here is how I maneuver. All things point to me getting the gold. That's what I'm going to do. Like he, he feels like a sweetie who is there to wrestle, and I like it. 
Yeah. And even his response is he kind of has the perfect response to, hey, everybody hates you. What's up with that? He says, I don't give a shit. Mm -hmm. What is this? High school? Oh, yeah. I'll, absolutely. You go somewhere where you're doing good work and everyone hates you, but you love the work you're doing. Fuck that shit. Most likely they're jealous. Uh huh. And they ain't taking none of that high school bullshit. And as soon as he says that, his job's that we're not here to make friends. I'm here to be the best. Like, I can not visually, but spiritually see Vampiro's cock getting hard for this answer. <laughs> I can see the wheels turning, just going, yes, I love that. Fuck Masquerita. Kick that guy in his face. I fucking hate that dude. And I hate friends Vampiro style. I love it. Ugh. I love it. Vampiro loves it. Uh, he follows up with taking out, uh, talking about taking out the champ right off the bat. Cage says, yeah, I'm not going to wait my turn. I'm taking my shot. And it's, and it's really what it's all about. Cage is jumping the line because now is his time. There's not, a, you know, this isn't, there's not like a clear list of like who's in line for shots. It's kind mm -hmm. of, which is like what wrestling has been in for most, in most companies. It's like, hey, if you show up and you let us know, you prove yourself and you sell tickets. Yeah, you get to the front of the line. There's not a clear line like that. And Cage is here letting him know. Yeah. He's not here to make friends. He's here to win The Bachelor. He does also say, hey, I'm going to take that 20 pounds of gold. And I call bullshit artist on that. Is that thing really 20 pounds? That's so heavy for a belt. It might. I mean, the NWA title is famously the 10 pounds of gold. And it's not a very big belt. That's a pretty, like, oh. compared to this one, it's pretty small. So it's probably around... Maybe more like 15, but okay. 20 sounds better. But yeah, <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, Vamp says, uh, what makes you so sure you're not, you're going to dominate? Cage, uh, this is kind of like towards the end. Cage says, it doesn't matter how long I've been here. I'm not going to wait my turn. I'm not going to wait my, he, he doubles down. He's not going to wait his turn. Disney banned me four times for cutting lines and, and, and bitches throats. I cut both of them and I don't give a shit because I'm Cage, baby. And I love that for him. And I hate that mouse. And, I love, and, he, and he drops he drops that he wrestled Conan and he beat him. And I like and you see Vampiro's face go, damn. Oh, I didn't know you wrestled Conan. Shit. Uh, and it's exci I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for Cage. He says, yeah, I wrestled him away from that cane of his. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have another match coming up. Superfly versus Pentagon Jr. By the way, shout out to Superfly in the all denim uh, long vest. I fucking loved it. That's my new, I mean, he's not my guy. And Helico's my guy, but that's my vest. Easily. I love it. Uh, this is the first time we've seen Penta since he was betrayed by Chavo. And they let us know up top, this is a competitive match for two mid-carters to break from the herd. Right? They don't have a lot of personal animosity going into this. This is about proving themselves to get out of this sort of like mid-range and like boost themselves up to the top. And like that's, dude, that's Penta's whole thing, man. Everyone in, everyone in Mexico hates him. He has no respect. And he fucking deserves it because he's great he's not the flyest he's not the fast he's not the he's not this he's not the speediest he's not the most high fly flippiest but he's got insane fucking grapples he is at a brilliant base and his he's got pimpinella level chops too mm -hmm. like he when he slaps you in the titties you feel it in your butt which is all i can ask for in a chop and they also go over this uh zero miedo uh, which is uh, zero fear. It means no fear for the rest of your days. And I love it. And the child's ch the crowd, the child's cranting it. No, the crowd's chanting it, James. No, I think they're cranting it. They're cranting it. The child is cranting zero, zero miedo. Clap, 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 clap. And it's it's so weird to see that just because like that happens now. And it's different. Like Penta is a baby face now, like today in 2022. It's weird seeing this transition of like, you know, kind of like, I'll do whatever it takes. I'm a piece of shit. I hang out with Chavo Guerrero Penta into what we get today, which like is one of the best messages. Someone asked him, there was a kid at a uh, post uh, pay-per-view scrum, like media scrum. And they're like, what is, what does Sarah Miedo mean? And, he's, and he kind of breaks it down. He's like, well, hell, first of all, he's adorable with children. He is a father of it, uh, his, uh, himself. So he's a, he's great with kids. Well, he's a father of himself. Yep, he is his own grandfather too. Damn, he is Tom Arnold from the Stupids. But he breaks it down. It's like no, it's about going in there with no fears, going in there and doing it, and 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 not just doing it, just Nike style, but none of that corporate bullshit tied to it. And I'm just like ah, you're such a baby face. Like what ah, why are you hanging out with Javo? Sean, I'll say this right now. One of my notes. 
at the end of this match. I, it's not a surprise he went babyface because I put down Penta is a dirt bike kid. Penta is a dirt bike kid. He ain't no dirt bag kid. No, this kid. Oh my god, Penta is the most dirt bike kid. I feel like grew up on the wrong side of the tracks and just uh maybe made some passes at a cheerleader, got punched in the gut for it, and said, you know what? I'm gonna take out this aggression on the dirt tracks. I fucking love this guy. Uh, he gets he hits the Tanahashi clothesline today, known as the Sling Blade, closes the match off with a package pile driver. For the win at 5 minutes, 10 seconds. He did it. And correction, I apologize. The mysterious love of the woman appears in this match. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll fucked up. Uh, then post-match, he cuts... I think the... F- is this the first promo in Spanish we've had? I th- think no. so. No. Because okay, Penta's then. done another one, and I think that one Hunter got. King Cuerno might have done... Or maybe it might have just been Penta maybe twice. It might have been Penta twice. I don't think... Because I don't think Phoenix has talked much yet. But Penta breaks it down for the crowd. He thought Shava was a legend, that he could help me. That dude is a fraud. Penta knows there is someone willing to join forces and help me because I'm Pentagon Jr. Saro Miedo. Now, who is this mystery partner that will help him? Is it the mysterious leather woman? Is it Kevin Steen, who was using the package pile driver at the time? Is it M Dog 20? I don't know. But I'm excited to find out. Uh, I wrote down Penta's looking for a sixth. He needs another dinosaur to go in with the rest. Wait, what? Pentagon. It's five guns. Oh, God damn it. I forgot. Yeah, okay. Good callback. Perfect joke. I'm a dummy. I loved it. Uh, We move on to Sexy Star versus El Mariachi Loco. Can I say, I was like, what did I write down? I was like, this collection of guys is really good. This collection of gains. Oh, it's this collection of guns Guns. is really good. The dinosaur from Tekken. Five guns, of course, from Tekken 3 and the popular manga, Gone. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) uh, Sexy Star versus El Mariachi Loco. It's a great match. It's weird how much the story with with Sexy Star right now is that she's a role model and they love letting her know she's a role model, not just for girls, but for boys, for men, for women, for everyone. And then you're just like, yeah, she also is a scumbag who won't be booked after trying to break Rosemary's arm. Yeah, but that's a future thing. We don't need to keep bringing that up. What we should yeah. keep bringing up is how mm-hmm. goddamn Pentagon should not be in any league whatsoever. He is five Wait, prehistoric dinosaurs okay. who just were on an how island, came dare. together, put on face paint, juggalo style, kind Oop, of whoop. formed into a, 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 a Voltron, if you will, of a professional wrestler. James, you ignorant slut. My only note for Pentagon Jr. is that I think they should bring back the fart-based offense. Oh, yeah. Gone famous. I think that's the one thing that's missing. And as soon as, as, soon as these five guns stacked on top of each other, wearing face paint and doing sling blades, bring back a little bit of Tootskis. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Here's how you know I'm a younger brother, is that <laughs> my brother older many times would say fuck you James and walk away because I would just get him cornered and spam that fart maneuver over and (laughs) over again until he would die and he would leave also with the XO for law of the like backwards like jump kick love that love the back that one's a little trickier though because that's a little bit more on timing where with gone it's like I'm a tiny dude with like zero hitbox I'm going to fart on you for 10 minutes. Yeah. Where you're like, I love... Actually, like, that's my main. I still play Tekken. Uh, and, like, Law is my main because catching someone with that backflip kick is the best feeling in the world. Speaking of backflips, I'm backflipping for this Mariachi Loco mask. The fucking tongue is sticking out. I'm like, I'm real... I don't think he's going to get real high on the card. I hope he does. I hope he does, too. I love his story. I love that he's just a dishwasher whose dreams are coming true. I love the mask. I love the the black and the red. And I love that he never tried to actually break Rosemary's arm. I also hope he doesn't actually work for tips because knowing the wrestling business, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. Uh, That's a uh, Mexico in Mexico is after a I think it's Mexico after after a match. 
that people really like their throw singles into the ring. Oh, hell yeah. So, hell yeah. So, I don't know, maybe. We'll see. I do like the pairing of these two because they are both sexy in their fighting when both of them get grappled from behind they both wiggle out all seductively i'm like yeah yeah yo sexy star to get out of that um that go behind she drops i don't i don't know if i've seen this before or i don't see it a lot she drops all the way to her ass she does a full sit out while he's like behind her grabbing the waist and that was that's that was very cool that was very impressive it's a bummer she's a terrible person, but that looked great. And Mariachi, with gyrations for days, still can't get it done. As Sexy Star rolls away from a flipping senton, a swanton bomb if you will, and hits Mariachi Loco for the small package. Three minutes, 50 seconds. James, you disagree. I cannot believe you'd bring in that drug peddling piece hey, of shit yo. oh hey guys children wear your wear your swan ton armbands and well you also get prepared because you know there's little holes in those armbands it's yeah. placements for where the best veins are oh my god i cannot believe you would say these things the views of james marsh land mccollum do not represent so what are you talking pro wrestling? Jeff Hardy, we wish you a speedy recovery in your road to sobriety. Jeff Hardy, We're, the individual, absolutely. Jeff Hardy, the role model to children? No. He never shot up on TV. Okay, well, yeah, but he's his character is clearly <laughs> seductively saying that in his wrestling moves. I think his character is just seductive. End of sentence. Break me off a piece of that armband with holes that everyone wanted. That's like, that's peak hot topic fashion. I At that time, oh my God. That, maybe not in 2014, but back like in, you know, 2005, 2000, you know, 2001. Ooh, wee. Sean, if we ever go to a pro wrestling match together, I will... You'll be waiting at the bus stop right out front of the venue. And as I walk out, you'll notice a hot pink arm thing on me. And you'll be like, Jesus, you need to take that off. People will Why? think you're I the lamest. Absolutely not. Okay. I will slowly re like roll up the sleeves on my denim jacket to show you mine. And then I'll put a finger to my, my lips to say, shh, wait till we get in. And then I'll put on my feather boa because secretly I've been a Hulk Hogan fan this whole time. What a twist. Whoa. I love that piece of shit garbage wrestler who fucking did so much more damage to people than help. And also had a weird relationship with his daughter. God, I love that absolute piece of human trash garbage. Hey, if Brooke were my daughter, I'd have the same exact relationship oh, with her. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After the match, we cut to two little boys with Lucha Underground shirts and tough guy security glasses in the crowd with their hands on their hips. I'm assuming this is Machete security. Maybe. I do also, real quick, this is a rumor in quotes, I'm pretty sure it's factual, about the Hulkster. His pubic mm. hair is also shaved as the same of his mustache. Oh, yes. That's what, that's what happens when you say your prayers and you eat your vitamins. You get a handlebar pube stash. Mm -hmm. And you get to this final match of the evening. The main event! James, it is King Cuerno versus Drago. Last luchador standing. And speaking of facial hair, we see Drago's got a little scruff on him. Drago did not shave this morning. King Cuerno living rent-free in his head, maybe... Just maybe. Uh, the rules of a, last, of a last luchador standing, also known as the last man standing, uh, is no disqualification. There are no pinfalls. There are no submissions. The only way to win is having your opponent not answering a 10 count on their feet. Boxing style. And it should be known on their feet. Shoulders don't need to be on the ground. No, it, you need to be like on your feet. Like, like, like a boxer, you need to be on your feet. You need to be responsive. Like, you know, it's one of those things, as is everything in wrestling, up to referee discretion, mm -hmm. what on your feet means. But, like, I, I always took it to assume, like, a 10-count knockout, a la Super Punch-Out with Little Mac and others. I never actually played that game. Sean, you're, you're a 10-star knockout. 
Oh my gosh, do you mean that? I do, ladies. Let's do this net and game shit on Twitch with Sean. I'm a juggalo, uh, and I'm ready for you, juggahos. <laughs> no uh-huh. juggalettes. Oh, right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a real juggalo. Or don't, juggalos. Don't. I truly don't know your sexual orientation, Sean. You don't? Okay. I mean, you, you've said you, you've had girlfriends, but you could be bisexual. You could be pansexual. That's true. I could be. Um, Drago, t- uh... Drago Speed takes over the first. Was I supposed to answer that? No, that wasn't uh, no a just leave it yeah. mystery, baby. Drago Speed takes over first, uh, as it's wanted to be. It's two very distinct. We talked before about styles. I, I like this match so much because on the surface, if you're just kind of like driving by real quick, it might look like, oh, yeah, it's two dudes in masks. They're both real jacked. I bet they're both like high flyers. <laughs> but there is a but there is a distinction. Drago takes over quickly with a lot of like high impact stuff. He's the first guy to bounce off the ropes multiple times to build up speed. Cuerdo is a lot more focused. We've said this before. One of the reasons I, I, I don't know. I did not expect for me to be such a Cuerdo fan when this podcast started. I fucking love him because it is so he's playing chess. He's playing mind games. He's the one in the head of Drago trying to figure out where he's going to go before he slaps him. Mm hmm. And that's the and that's and that's the match. Speed versus brain. What's the word I'm looking for? Brawn? Not brawn. Cause he's not because he's not just like I'm stronger than you. It's it, it it's it's I guess tactics, tactician, yeah. strategy, something like that. Speed versus patience. That's perfect. Speed versus patience. The timing of Querno versus the absolute overwhelmingness that is Drago. Who takes over first? He's on top. Uh after Quer which is unlike Cuerno, whiffs on a missile drop kick. Cuerno tries to take over first, uh, but absolutely misses everything on a drop kick, lands on his tukus, and is Dragos to take over. He um, hits a big double rope running, like just bounces off the ropes, bounces off the ropes, bounces off the ropes, bounces off the ropes, bling, bling. then hits that drop kick to the face of Cuerno uh. before the tope senton, knocking Cuerno silly for a, ten, for a seven count. So early in the match, we already got a seven count. And, and it's, it's still all Drago. Drago hitting the hanging DDT. Cuerno has to roll out for distance. And this is where the patience of Cuerno shows itself. He rolls out. He creates the distance. He lets Drago close that distance himself, do all the work to catch him into a running sit-out powerbomb on the floor for another seven count. Excuse me. Sean, how I if we were on a in a last man standing match, what I'd do is I I'd staple your nuts to the ground. No, you know what I do? I I I tie your eyelids open and feed you nothing but sleeping pills. I thought you were gonna start doing the whole Wu Tang Clan thing. Yeah, I didn't remember all of them. I was hoping you would go next and then I would like come back. It's like you sew their their butthole shut and keep feeding them and feeding them. Yeah, that's definitely one. Uh, there's something about peeing on them. I thought there was also a a hot a wire hanger. I bet. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna fold your clothes after you do your laundry and hang it up on a hot wire hanger, you messy boy. I'm gonna mommy dearest you. It, in that you're going to be a phenomenal actor who maybe takes things a little too far, Joan Crawford. Okay. No, I'm just gonna scream no more wire hangers and beat a child. Oh, no. Well, I'm going to now voyage your you, where uh, you will be my patient, and I will give you the confidence you need to go on a cruise and meet the man of your dreams and finally break away from your overbearing mother, Betty Davis. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is voyeur you. I'm going to get the apartment across the street from yours and okay. just record you from your window. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is poyer you, which is where I, I convince everyone you're Jordan Poyer, uh, safety for the Buffalo Bills, and I send you over there to play for their defense, which desperately needs it right now. We're down Trey Edmonds. We're down Trey White. It's, 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 it's a madhouse. It's a madhouse. Sean, I'm going to Tom Sawyer you. I'm going to make you <laughs> paint a fence. <laughs> Great. I'm going to Tom Tom Club you. That's where we break off from the, the talking heads and we get a number one single that gets covered by Mariah Carey. I'm going to long john you. I'm going to put you in some nice little like flannel pants and shove you out and say, hey, everyone, he thinks he was abducted by an alien. 
wait, what? Oh, okay, because hillbillies. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm actually gonna take that. I long johns are so good. Long johns are like the best thing in the world. Yeah. I got distracted. I you win because you have successfully distracted me because I love long johns so freaking much. If we were on the same Sawyer, I was gonna say, I'm gonna lawyer you. You're just gonna sue me? Yeah. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to sue Cosmere's you. Also, that was my neighbor growing up. Congrats against the, the Vikings. We Thank you. Right? Have we played the Vikings? No. No, I think the big I think the big deal now is we're trying to figure out if we can play Detroit or if we can get to Detroit because Buffalo is like covered in snow. I thought the Bills just had like a really good like a weekend or two ago. Maybe. I think you're right. I don't know what today is. You keep talking about this match. Regarding the deliberate timing of Cuerno. Uh, vampire as striker is it like a game to him is it like a chess match and striker who knows what gets people off this man cannot stop being horny he needs help guys i'm saying a gofundme for mad striker always horny please send help give him some long john take it rub his dick against he, lord knows he needs it back in the ring cuerno these double german suplexes doing it a little bit a little bit of a, a rabbit wolverine style holding on to the s grip as he takes him over second suplex transitions into the brain buster it's this it's insane and i wonder i'm curious to like was he wrestling because i don't know how he was wrestling before was he wrestling like this beforehand or did he adapt to a more technical style to play the hunter i hope because that'd be cool I mean, I'm also just a sucker for nerds, wherever it is. Billy was my favorite Power Ranger. Donatello. Donatello, is, it was always either Donatello or uh, 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 Raph or Mikey. Mikey. Mikey was orange, right? Mikey's the definition of zuzzy za. And this is a for true. <laughs> but I always, I always love, not, not just like I'm good at machines, but like what I do, I do in a very technical way. I do mm -hmm. it in a very like nerdy breakdown way. So like I'm... All over. I love Zazi Za. Who's Zaz who is Zazi Za in Lucha Underground right now? I guess um uh, the bartender. El Mariachi guy. Loco? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, probably El Mariachi Loco. I'm trying to think if there's anyone who might have a shot at winning the world title. Oh. Who's Zazi Za? But that's kind of hard to find. Kind of Mundo. Mundo's pretty Zazi Za. Mundo's very Zazi Za, actually. Mundo's literally just like, I don't know. I'm going to steal shit from you until you give me what I want. That's mm -hmm. pretty Zazi. In wrestling, that's very Zazi Za. I will say I uh, I thought how on who charted they were talking about this Vikings versus Bills from the 13th last week. Oh, yeah. I thought I the Bills had won, but I heard that it was one of the best games in a long time. Just like this was fucking great. The Bills we just did, lost. Yeah. yeah. By a okay, little that's bit. That's why. Yeah. Which is sucks. It makes it worse. <laughs> I don't know. He's been the whole game getting hopeful and then agitated. I missed it because we were we were recording, I think. I do believe, I mean, factually, they lost on purpose to bring families together. Thank you, Joe Para. As we spend every episode, this is the moment to thank Joe Para. One of my favorite striker lines from this episode was talking about Drago and he's like, oh man, the tenacity, the, you know, the usual, the audacity, the tenacity in, dare I say it? The balls on this guy. <laughs> he's ballsy. He's kind of crazy. Uh, like, I, I, Cuerno takes him on the ground. He goes for the table. He sets up the table. Drago saves that table and says, you know what? Fuck you. You're, I'm going to put you through the table. Wait. So he thinks. So he thinks. Yeah. Also, Drago's is, plan. is Drago married to Elon Musk? Because he's ballsy? All right, then. <laughs> 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 Uh, Cuerno does put Drago through the table with a thrill of the hunt, but it's only a, like 8.5, 9.7. It's not enough for the 10 count. Uh -uh. Cuerno can't believe it. I can't believe it. The ballsy balls on this dragon creature blows my mind. Yeah. So Qu Cuerno does what Cuerno does best. He outthinks him. He goes under the ring again. This time he pulls out rope. Which he takes, yes. we're about to find out a factually incorrect thing Stryker, I believe, said, which was you have to look at whose head is higher, and that's the one who's eking it out. 
yeah, I guess what he's referring to like who's less tired, who's more like who is actually holding their head up as opposed to drooping it down like you're falling asleep on the bus, but you don't want to fall asleep on the bus because you don't want to fall asleep on the bus. Mm -hmm. However, Drago's like still in it. He rolls in the ring. He got up after the thrill of the kill, but he's in the he's in the ring. He's on his butt. He's kind of lying down. He's going for he's taking a mild snooze. Meanwhile, Cuerno is running around behind him, tying him up, going around his throat like truly some like Shibata level knots we got going on until it's too late. Drago realizes what's happening, but he cannot stand up and physically by any means. He just he's too literally tied down. Uh, so the ref has to count 10. And despite not being knocked out, despite mentally and spiritually being able to answer the 10 count, Drago physically cannot. And so the third match in this best of three series, as it has become, goes to King Cuerno mm -hmm. for big brain Shibata based place this was also extremely brutal at first i hated this win like it, it was yeah. a quick like oh this sucks this is dangerous no thank you and again he has his buck head up top that's also dangerous a tragedy waiting to happen but i do if you if you're watching this the uh, ropes around his arms because it goes around his arm then his neck then his arms the neck was loose but the arms were tight so even though it looked like he was getting like real tight the the neck was somewhat loose wasn't cutting off circulation but mm -hmm. even though i was like this sucks this is fucked up like truly it looked fucked up it looks it looks it looks like he's because he's also Cuerno is pulling on the ropes from behind as Drago from behind as Drago is trying to stand up. So it looks brutal. It looks like he is gar garroting, garroting this man. Like, uh, you know, like when like in the in the Godfather, when you take a wire and you go behind someone and you mm. choke them with the wire. It looks like he's doing that with this rope, but he's tied it in such a way is a very good illusion mm -hmm. uh, in that sense. And then because it is safe. Yes, it snapped. I'm like, no, this is what a hunter would do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, even though it sucks, yeah. it still fits the character, and I enjoyed it for that. And in a way, it protects Drago, because Cuerno didn't beat Drago by being the better wrestler. He beat him by being the smarter wrestler. Mm -hmm. Like, as a fan in the audience, yeah, fuck this guy, King Cuerno. He's a bully. He's not, like, he's a he is a bully. I think is a fair... A fair part of his character to add. But a to. sexy one. <laughs> well, they're all sexy. You show me someone who walks in that temple who is not sexy, and I will say no, because they're all sexy. Uh, he's a very sexy bully, but he is a bully. Like, he's like, I would boo this man, but I enjoy. There are so many things I just enjoy, uh, both as, like, you know, a, a, as a critiquer. And a nerd who's like, a, hmm, the way you did this and the way you made all these numbers add up, I really enjoy. But also just as someone who enjoys technical wrestling mm -hmm. and enjoys the way he's committed so much to this character. Uh, where like, yeah, tying him up and sort of like choking him from behind in a way that, again, like the knot is so good. It is so easy to do that rope spot and make it look so shitty or to make it actually dangerous and actually go around the throat. Like, no, the not like the way he tied the ropes, he secured the arms. He got it around the neck, but he wasn't applying pressure to the neck, but he made it look like he was. He had to go to rope training for this. You don't mm -hmm. just know that. Like he like that was like this was a very clean knot, man. This is a, Queen Cuerno is not just a hunter, not just a bully, not just a bastard. He's also a boy scout and a man scout. I love this dude. Uh, I'm Wins constantly asking Nicole to choke me from behind. Mm hmm. That's fun. No, I'm kidding. I'm constantly asking her to stop doing it. She'll just, um, did I ever tell you this? There was a girl in my brother's grade when I was in third grade at Granville West Elementary, possibly, who just acted like a raptor during recess and would jump on people's back and bite, <laughs> bite their neck. What grade third, you said? I was in third, so she was probably in fourth or fifth. That's too old to be doing that. Yeah. Third is kind of too old, but you're like, whatever. Fourth or fifth? Okay. Well, all right. Sure. <laughs> and she was doing it to you, a third grader? No, she was doing it to anyone. Okay. So they were, 
surprise, surprise, she was part of the nerds. So... (laughs) (laughs) No, what? There was once when... This is, I don't know if she always did it, but she always acted like a raptor or a, just a general dinosaur. But there was once when one of the nerds was getting beat up. So she ran like a raptor, like Rear! behind, from behind of the person bullying and beating up her friend and jumped on his back and started clawing and biting him. Did it work? Like, did it break up the fight? Yeah. Yeah. I then cannot actually judge her. When I was a kid, I was probably I was probably a third. I hope I wasn't in fifth grade. I might have been in fifth grade. It was back when I was still wearing, you know, those starter jackets with the team logos on them? Yeah. Like the big puffy jackets. I had one of those. And especially when they're a little too big for you, it's very easy to crawl inside. And I was a big fan of armadillos for some reason. I just thought they were real cool animals. Oh, that I thought the story was going to be a friend of yours was getting into a fight and you just crawled into the jacket and you're like, I'm just going to forget this is even happening. I'm that big of a coward. I wish that's actually what I did. Uh, When my dad, uh, my dad's first house after he moved out uh, was across the street from a park uh, that we would play at. And like kids in the neighborhood would come by and play it all the time. And I don't think I realized it was a real fight I had gotten myself into. Until, like, it was way too late. Until a girl jumped on your back and started velociraptoring you? I wish. No, like, I <laughs> like I was getting... Like, I was about to get stomped out. Mm-hmm. Like, actually stomped out. Because I thought in my head, like, you know what I'm going to do? Armadillo style, baby. Where, like, my one... My big strategy was crawl up in a ball inside my jacket and make him come to me. Not realizing, no, this dude's just going to stomp me out. <laughs> Thankfully, my dad, because, uh, again, we lived across, literally across the street from the park. He saw it. He's like, what's my what's my weird theater kid? What's my weird, <laughs> sensitive theater kid doing? Uh, I remember. So he just, like, runs across the street, jumps over the fence. And he's like, hey, children, I'm bigger than you. Go away. And they're like, yeah, that's true. OK. All right. Yeah, and then a velociraptor like, jumped from behind on your dad. Like all of that, again, would have been cooler than me actually just like, you know what's going to stop me from getting my ass kicked? Armadillo style. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. the fights I got into was because people would make fun of me and then I'd go into a rage and just windmill punch the shit out of them. I never yeah. lost any fights. If you don't know how to fight, especially if you're a kid and you're like, at that point, you barely know how to use your body. The windmill is a very effective. We used to do that in high school a bunch where it's like, Oh, let's just windmill at each other. Well, we're also all metalheads, too. But we're like, I mean, but for true, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, there was no, like, boxing club or anything. So it's like, if I just windmill you, bud, and my arm is longer than you, go fuck yourself. It's over. So this is the last story that I'll tell, and then we'll do plugs. It, yeah. it relates to me going into a fury. In fifth grade, fifth grade was the last year that I stopped becoming a ball of rage because I smoked weed like four times in sixth grade and that leveled me out, which, yeah, guys, give your children weed. (laughs) Or, hey, cousins or older sister's boyfriends, give these children weed. So is your kid's sister acting like a raptor jumping on kids' backs? Give them a little bit of weed. Maybe they'll turn into like a brontosaurus. Uh huh. Oh, my God. Jurassic Park, they should have just been lighting up, blowing smoke in those raptors' faces. Oh, you don't think da- Dr. Malcolm was fucking stoned 427? Not enough, though. So, no, yeah. Th- we're, okay. we were, it was gym class, and we were playing Frisbee golf. It's right when Frisbee golf, I guess, came to Muskegon. We're playing, and I'm not an athletic kid, and... I just keep trying to hit the thing I need to hit and just whiffing nonstop. This is probably like a par four. And I like, and that's being like generous because yeah. we're children playing. I'm at maybe an eight or a 12 and I'm freaking the fuck out by this, like getting visibly angry. And the, the people on my team are fueling it. They are not being kind about this of like, Hey man, just like, let's say 10, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And 
to the point where I, I like I snapped and just ran at one of them and just started punching the shit out of them as much as I could. Well, they're just all laughing like they're they're not phased by this to the point where they started just saying, hey, James, you're going to go frisbee golf on them. <laughs> and for years, I was I would just be known as frisbee golf. I remember sometimes it's like it's, it's that one fight that just like sticks with you. My friend Rioth, he was two years older than me in high school. So it was, I think it was his sophomore freshman year before I got there. But I guess real early in his high school career, he got into a fight and either before or after he uttered the phrase, uh, I just want to know the taste of blood. And, <laughs> and like by the time I get there, he's the nicest older classman. He's an absolute sweetheart. He's taken care of me. He's nothing. He's nothing but like a very kind, warm figure in my eyes. And then people will come up to him. It's like, hey, Ree, how's that taste of blood? And I'm like, what? Who? Why is everyone asking my mother figure, my high school motherly figure, the taste of blood? I is is that one fight that sticks with you? This is a real quick one. Kids would practice boxing each other in my neighborhood. And I was like, now, nah, okay. And these are kids that are like two years younger than me. So they're like, yeah, man, come on, James, let's box. And what I do, they're like all in a boxing stance. I am too. But then once they start hitting, I just drop down and like let them hit. And wow. they're, they're, they, they do like a punch, a punch. And I'm just like staring at them. And they're like, uh, they drop their gloves and they're like, no, fuck this. James is a crazy person. No, thank you. Don't fight crazy. Ooh. You don't fight crazy. That's the first rule. Hey, Arnold taught us that. Mm-hmm. Oh, it hit me? I'll hit me. Ow! Mm-hmm. Well, guys, mm -hmm. that's today's episode. Sean, what you got to plug? You know me, baby. I'm twitch.tv slash goosevk. And you can also listen to me on a future episode of Formulaic. Nope, yesterday's episode of Formulaic. Yesterday's episode of Formulaic. Also, since we recorded that table read like a day before it technically needs to be put out, Shelby was surprised that I could get it done that fast. I'm like, it's going to be easy. It's like a 35 minute recording in sequence. It'll be fine. Oh, I am James. I can record. I can edit so easily. Ooby dooby dooby doo. You sanctimonious ass yeah so guys pay me to do it for you ooh, ooh, that's ooh. true at ooh, mss ooh, pod ooh. on twitter ooh. and uh i'm on parlor now as well no i'm get not get the fuck just get your crazy old mlmpod.com to find out information about formulaic mostly speaking sentai and the height of horror first episode is out we're going through 1999 we picked 13 movies or technically 12 then we'll have a listener choice we picked 12 movies from 1999 try and figuring out is this a good year in horror a bad year best worst who knows vampires john carpenters very good check it out and listen to my music under Marsh Land Monster, a brand new single, me and Dragon Boy Suede called Baltic State, coming out December 9th, <laughs> so be on the lookout. Yeah. We might have got a sneak peek, some of us, uh, who are close to James, and it's pretty groovy. Hell Recommend. yeah. Recommend. Recommend. And then go over to patreon.com forward slash MLM pod, where for $5 a month, you get exclusive content every single Friday. Ooh, baby, it's a real fun time. But if you'd like to do more, $10 gets you a monthly exclusive content on top of that month of that weekly content and shout outs Whoa. on every single free feed podcast, which if you want your shout outs to be, I don't know, maybe you have a website and you want me to just read off the website as long as it's not smut in a bad way. There's good smut out there. But yeah, yeah. Let's Quality begin with those. smut only. Mm hmm. Starting with Steve F. 20 years I've been living here. <laughs> Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour. 20 beers in my belly. Cheers. Alex Z the Waz. PBR is what I'm drinking here. Orion, he's a rapper. Defo, D hyphen F O. 20 years I've been living here. Kayla, AK2 Grapes. 20 beers in my belly. Cheers. Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. PBR is what I'm drinking here. My Bickle, my brother in Kamala, Joshua Jakis. 20 years I've been living here. Steve Barnes, co-host of Sweet Child of Time. 20 beers in my belly, cheers. My mother. PBR is at the womb, cheer. You didn't say the womb part. Yeah, I switch it up. I co- oh, you keep me on my toes. My mother is more than just a womb, okay? 
That is true. She's also a PBR and is what I'm drinking here. And finally, little Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. Somebody help Matt Stryker. He's always horny and I'm concerned. And I'm concerned about this episode. And I'm Sean. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah.